So good morning, September the 15th, 2014. This is CISG 113, Section 1, Information Security and Privacy. Today is the first class in the fourth week into the semester. Also, the last week for learning contract number one, the theme, Inquiry-Based Learning. Okay, let's get started. Good morning, welcome back to this class, Monday morning. Today is September the 15th, as you can see, day number 7. Okay, if you look at the schedule, this is the last week for learning contract number 1. In other words, we're going to spend this week as the last week to do inquiry-based learning before we step into another way to learn next week, that is the SRL, self-regulated learning. Now, don't get mistaken, um, inquiry-based learning we continue to use it, but on top of the existing knowledge or skills or competency that you have already established, we are going to add on to it the layer called self-regulated learning next week. Now so much for that, and we're going to introduce more next week. But if you look at the schedule, for this week, week number four, we're coming to common module number four, and the theme is information literacy and competency. And that is a very, very important topic, okay? Information literacy is how we deal with information in the contemporary world, how we're going to identify what we need, look for the information, evaluate the information, select the appropriate amount of the information for our use, give credit to the source of the information, and we also need to carry with us the ethical mindset. So if you look at the teacher's message for this week, which I released yesterday, you can see the pairing information for this class that ends a reminder that by the end of this week, which is the 20th of September, but I add one more day, that is the 21st of September, that means the very much Sunday of next week, you have to submit the artifacts for learning contract number one. And for this morning, I forgot to add the links here, but I'm going to do it during this uh, noon time. Okay, so um, we're going to study something called information literacy this week, and uh, that is a very challenging topic, okay? So uh, let us try to get started with this topic, uh, but before that, I hope that you take a good look at the teacher's message I sent to you yesterday. Now, um, the teacher's message is here, okay? That is teacher's message for week number four. If you look at the teacher's message for week number four, which is here, okay? You can see that um, I have given you a pretty good reminder on your parent information, okay? Except for that I still got some students who are not paired up yet, and you, are, you have to do your pair-based discussions, all right? And you can see that those neighbors incomplete means those students who have yet to supply your pairing information in Dr. Vet's Q&A hotline for week number two. So when you look at, when you see your names there uh, without any pair information, you better do something before the end of today's class, okay? And then you see that we do have a support network now as I informed you in today's message. And then we have the um, the other fact, okay? So that is the assignment for learning country number one. You can see that you are supposed to complete six different items. You're supposed to submit six different artifacts. So item one, item two, item three, item four, okay? Item five, item six, okay? This six different artifacts you must prepare individually and submit it individually through the submission link. And then uh, I have add something <coughs> to make sure you understand the meaning of online learning journals, online peer discussion forums, and the um, online blog post that we're just supposed to do. Okay, so make sure you come back to this table to remind you what you need to prepare for submission before the end of this coming Sunday. Okay, so let us try to give you uh, a little bit more. So, information's here. Now, if you go to the website of our Moodle environment today, you can see that we are 
somewhere in week number four. And then after the block of week number four, you can see the submission links for learning contract number one. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so you need to go to individual submission link to submit your artifact for that particular link. For example, the online learning journal, the peer discussion forum, the records, the peer discussions report, the individual personal blog, your individual proposal, and the meeting minutes. Okay, at least one. Now, I also noticed that some of you have been doing your peer based discussion with your learning partner using a public online discussion forum here or somewhere in the forum in week number three. But let me remind you, you are supposed to do your peer discussion using the peer online discussion forum for weeks number three and four here. Make sure you click on this link and select your peer discussion name, for example. Uh, if you're pair zero 01, you select pair zero 01. Now, you can see that not yet here because some of you have already moved or never come here to do discussions. Now, when I look at your submission, when I do the checking to verify that you did some discussions with your learning partner, I will come to this very specific pair online discussion forum for week number three and week number four to check on it, okay? So you must have your discussion details here in order to uh, to qualify submitting and getting my grade for your learning artifact or peer discussions forum details. Okay, so you have to make sure that you will have discussions records here. Okay, so uh, number two, as you can see, a lot of you have not had the discussions details here. So do not, do not uh, believe that you do not need to do anything here and you can just have to submit a Microsoft Word document. I will not give you a grade, uh, even though you submit your Microsoft Word document for discussion detail, if you do not have discussions details here, okay? This is the forum designed to support your discussions detail. So this is very important, I need to remind you. <coughs> so if you look at the submission links here, uh, I have already given you upcoming reminder. You, you look at upcoming events on the right hand side of the Moodle environment. It tells you you have something to submit by 11.55 p.m. on Sunday, September 21st, and that is your online learning journal. You have something else to submit that is the peer discussion form details. Again, this is the deadline, and this is for the peer discussions report. Okay? And then this is for the individual personal bra and the individual proposal, as well as the um, meetings minutes. Again, as well as the meetings minutes here. So make sure you do not miss anything. And you must do it individually as your own submission, even though it's part of the pair work you completed or you completed, okay? So having said that, I believe that I have already given you a pretty good picture. And then, look at this, you have the assessment rubrics given here. That in other words, when you submit a piece of work, you should be able to understand the grade you're acquiring, you're earning. You just go to the rubrics there, and you can see, for example, if you're submitting your online journal, okay? This is the rubric for the online journal. You can give yourself a grade one, two, three, or four, to, to see if your work here that's fulfilled the requirements as expected here. Okay, your work is very simple. Now I'm giving you a grade on journal. It's one, two, three, or four points. Okay, only four points for the journal. If you do not qualify for a four, I will check whether or not you qualify for a three, and check qualifying if you qualify for a two or one. This is called beginning. This is called developing. This is not what we call compass, and this is called exemplary. Okay. So make sure you, you check the rubrics. Now the journal is very simple, four points. But the discussions, the pair bay discussions, you will have um, four points here for this criteria, four points here for this criteria, and four points here for this criteria. So for the discussions detail, you have 12 points together. Okay, you have 12 points together. And then you also need to check if you're in your discussion forum 
If you did not enter your discussion forum just like the two pairs that I've shown you, you got a zero point here. And if you do not enter, you got a zero point, so you got zero, okay? If you want to earn some points, make sure you develop some discussions detail based on the rubrics here, okay? So if your ideas are discovered that it does not add to the discussions, that means you do not really know which topic you're discussing, so which which journal topic or question you're discussing, so that there's a clear evidence that we can give you one over there, okay? So look at that and give yourself a grade. Is it not a bit too difficult to earn a good grade here, all right? So this is for the um, discussion forum. Again, the journal is four points, the discussion forum is 12 points, and then for the report, it's a little bit more challenging if you look at the report, we have one, two, three, four, five different criteria. And each of these criteria will earn you a maximum of four points. In other words, your report is going to earn you a maximum of 20, 20 points. So the journal is four points, the discussion forum is 12 points, the report is 20 points. Okay, so you can see the the amount of effort you should put into it. And then you look at the contacts, you look at the content, you look at the gender and the disciplinary conventions uh, where you, when you discuss something, the sources and evidence, the control syntax and mechanics. This is something you learn in your English writing class, so I do not need to elaborate too much on that, but you need to pay attention to the specific score if you happen to present a work that will give you this score for that, then you need to make sure you can shift it to this score. Okay, if you want to earn four points, that is what you need to demonstrate in your report. And you have to remember there is a format for the report, okay? So if you want to know the format of the report, you need to come here, report writing guidelines, which I've already given you, reminded last week, okay? So this is the report writing guide. That means you need to provide the following items in your in your in structuring your, your report. And then again for your block, we em employ the same criteria in your block to evaluate your work, which is again 20 points. I will give you another reminder probably by tomorrow or today about well, what you can write your block about in what way. But normally a rock should not be over 1,000 words in one piece of rock. And you can also add links, okay, to demonstrate your understanding. So it's 20 points, again 20 points, so that is 40 points. 40 points add to the discussion details, 52 points. 52 points add to the four points is 56 points. And finally, your, um, <coughs> your proposal again is four points. So four points are 60 points. And your meeting minutes again, four points, was all together 64 points. So um, you, the, the raw score for learning contract number one is 64 points, but the, the, the semester score for learning contract number one is 10 points. So we're going to use 64 points as the basis to check out how many of the 10 semester points you can earn in your first learning contract. So that is challenging very reasonable stuff and you must check it before you submit it okay and if you are you're submitting a piece of work that will only give you one point that you're expecting four point that's unrealistic because you're going to you're going to do some peer review later and you will suggest a score for your work okay and then i'm going to give you a score and your peers will give you a score and then you can check so here we go so uh, make sure you study the rubrics very carefully. These rubrics are given to you on the beginning of the semester, but here, we remind you one more time, it is how we're going to use it to give you a score, okay? It's a very important. So let's get back to the class now. It's 10.21. So since this is the fourth week into the semester, and uh, the theme is information literacy, let us try to see what is meant by information literacy by going through a very simple video. All right, so let's go for a video.
here we go. You got the first taste of what is meant by information literacy by going through this eight minutes soft video. Now please pair together with your learning partner. Use about five minutes time to discuss what you discover from this soft video. What is meant by information literacy? That's a student going through college, okay? Spend five minutes walking, talking together with your learning partner. It's your time to do that. And then I'm going to prepare an attendance list for today. Feel free to talk and interact with your learning partner. This is what you're supposed to do, okay? I will check the um, call for participation list today to see if any student would like to share, okay? Here we go, we're going through the attendance call now. Feel free to talk, you're supposed to talk here, to share your ideas. And I'm going to set up a forum for that too. So, let's see. Hell yeah. Thank you. Claudia. Not here yet. Ada. Thank you. Uh, Andy. Thank you. Ryan. Thank you. Jenny. Thank you. And Jackie. Thank you. And then uh, Wiping. Thank you. And C Ho. C C Lo. C Ho. Thank you. Sorry for that. Manfo. Manfo. Not here yet. Beatrice. Thank you. And Fish. Thank you. Angela. Thank you. Erika. Thank you. Wayam, Wayam, thank you. Ruby, thank you. C, thank you. Elisa, thank you. And then uh, Lokka, thank you. Steven, thank you. Terrence, Terrence, thank you. Winnie Hoon, Winnie, thank you. And then uh, Wysing, thank you. Dixon, Thank you. Winnie Ho. Thank you. Gideon. Thank you. A friend. Thank you. Michelle. Thank you. Abby Learn. Thank you. Uh, Lighting. Thank you. Uh, Nia. Thank you. Ryan Lamb. Thank you. And uh, Lester. Lester. Not here. Yeah. Thank you. Sorry. Uh, sorry. Thank you very much. Kelvin Day. Thank you. Baka. Thank you. Hanson. I met Hanson yesterday, but he's not here today. Okay. And then Jessica. Thank you. Tiki. Thank you. Uh, Chad Yu. Thank you. Iris. Thank you very much. Any first whose name is not called? All right, now let me go back to the uh, public discussion forum of last week to see if uh, anyone signed for today's sharing. Wow, I think of three responses, that's very good. So now let's see. So day number seven, that means today. Uh, Cindy, are you here? Okay, wait, all right. So Stephen, are you here? Are you ready for today? Okay, and then uh, hell yeah. uh, day number eight. Okay, so that means we have two students who would like to do the sharing. I'll give you the time, all right? So allow me to make sure that I set up the discussion forum for today's topic first. That is week number four. So.
Okay, now, I've set up the discussion forum here, so anytime during this class or after this class, you're most welcome to come here and press the return button or reply button and type in something. So in the meantime, uh, allow me to invite um, two students from this class to do the sharing today. The first one is Cindy with two minutes, and the top one is here, and the second one is Stephen, also with two minutes. Now since we have only two students here, I might give you up to three minutes time each, all right? So may I invite Cindy? Use my computer. Okay. We give you a hand. You can start any time, Cindy. Stephen, to go out there to pick up the microphone from Cindy. We're going to give you another set of break hands. Slice go to slice so. Yeah, yeah, slice so. From the very beginning. Yes, good. Good morning, everyone. I'm Stephen. Today I want to share about information technology. And what is information technology? And it has a short name called IT. And IT is the public application of computers and telecommunication equipment to store and it usually to save and manage the data. And then I have a question. Can I go sure, sure, sure. It's talking about the history of technology. The history of technology in education. 
Let's begin. It's too slow, so maybe we jump fast. It's okay. going to shape the classroom of tomorrow. So we all know um, information technology is in fact our life every time, every moment. So um, I think maybe in the future we don't need a teacher in the class and we just study at the computer and stay at home. So uh, information technology, um, we must think about the positive and negative and it how we fed our life. That's all, thank you. Thank you very much, Stephen. We would love to hear more from individual students. So I have a suggestion. For those of you who have already done your sharing in class, you can actually go to the public discussion forum where you sign up for your sharing. And just like what Stephen did, you can post the questions there, OK? And let individual students of your class, the class may respond. That would be a very good way to solicit response, to get feedback, and then also another very good way to show evidence of your in-class and outside of class participations. So I think it's very good. And I, we have two students doing it today, and so uh, it's lovely, and it's very good. Now, as you can see, everyone can get access to this PowerPoint, and uh, except for uh, if you want to make it much more clear for your fellow student to follow, when you create a new discussion thread, you might include the PowerPoint as well as the video link there, and then include a question. Okay? Can you get it, Stephen? Yeah. Okay. Make sure you do a good service for the fellow students. It's very important. The teacher here is just a facilitator. I never create a road of a knowledge transmitter as much as the other classes. That's the late century. This GD class, you know, this is class. Now let me see if we got some response from here. Alright, so think a little bit more about the stuff of our information literacy. 
view, and also the two sharing by your fellow classmate. Now spend about five minutes' time producing some responses of your own, okay? And of course, what Stephen could do now is basically pose the discussion question. How are you going to shape the classroom tomorrow, okay? So spend time talking with your learning partner before we come back, all right? So I think we've used the time today very well. Five minutes for free, free range discussions among yourself, all right? So now let me Now you can see that I got a lot of very positive responses of last time, but particularly uh, when I generate this particular topic, so it's responsive and everything. I got 16 responses from all of you, okay? This is a very good way to encourage the teacher and also the remaining of your classmates to participate. So today, we hope to get some more responses from all of you to response to the uh, ideas of what do you make of it? Uh, not here, definitely, but week number four. I mean, week number four. So, discussion about here. I hope we can, I can get some responses in here, okay? This is something we we can just spend some time thinking about this. What you have what you have watched here and what you're going to do next, right? Discussions. And of course, I'd love to give you music by the time you're thinking or talking. Let's have a little bit of the music. Around yourself, these musics are not the focus. The focus is in your discussions, okay? And I hope to get some more responses from you towards the end of this piece of music.
music would be very much interesting. It's just like when you get your responses. Remember, to provide the responses, in a minute we're going to go through the responses you provided for that. What do you make up? Discover information is interesting. Feel free to talk with Janani Pablo. There is the time for discussions, conversations. Negotiations, if you do not. Providing responses sometimes might be naughty, but as long as it's enriched with your ideas, it'll be so much better. Thank you very much to many of you. I've already given a lot of good responses now. Thank you. Look at that. The music could help. It might be jump over, but it's very interesting. By using the way of discover, students could organize better when they are having research on any information. I hope that this way of learning could be introduced to students more earlier. This is year one, first semester, okay? For example, if you talk in secondary school, indeed, it was done in secondary school, I'm going to show you a case example later. Steven said, discovery is guy student, not teach student, a student can learn by oneself. Very good. It's called true learning. It's a process of discovery guided by mentoring rather than the transmission of knowledge. And that is a very important saying by John Dewey, the education philosopher. Education philosopher is also the teacher of Wu Si. Wu Si. Okay? Then, Let's continue to take a look at Cindy's work. We should make sure the source of the information which we find, or sometimes we would get the wrong information. That means get the correct information, get the sources correct. 
Okay? And Gideon said, discover information literacy, it's an ability, very interesting, ability, something you need to do, ability, to articulate a problem to be investigated. That is also very important. You know what you're dealing with, so you start to look for necessary and important information to solve the problem. Let's see if we got some more. Okay. So from Helia, discover information literacy is to identify what data you want get from the intellect, okay, then verify and organize them, and finally share them and reflect on them. We must get to know what data is reliable by knowing where it comes from. That is a very good word. You need to know where, okay? You always go somewhere to find it. And where does it come from? And when to use it? On our own research or as well as assignment, we need to respect the offer that we need to make a citation. Now that is a very, very systematic, complete um, statement of what we expect all of you to acquire in the context of carrying out your learning contracts. And these includes quite a number of the expected attributes from a college student who has the knowledge to manage information in the internet age. Okay, that's very good, Helia. And then, Beatrice, I think it enables us to analyze, very good term, and to evaluate information. To analyze means to look at it carefully, to put forward several important questions about it, and to see if it satisfies with our needs. We find and it's giving us confidence to use the information to make some decision. Oh, this is a very good term. We need to make the best use of information for decision making. And normally, decision making must be based on sound and accurate information. Very good. C, what I have watched from the video is that in Information literacy is firstly the ability of knowing what information you're interested in and what are you going to look for. That means you need to know what you what you want, then uh, what you need to look for, for what you want, and then access and get to the information and search the limited information, identify if the information is appropriate or not, that means evaluate. Interpret what it, it is. Interpret what it is. Know why you need it. Okay? For what reason? Having our own understanding will finally share what you got. I think you did a very good job here. Thank you very much. Now, in the context of our world, um, let's also count Eliza. The video makes me think of my essay for EERC 131 last semester. <coughs> You are teaching from EEC, EEC is an English class, it must be well done, okay? And uh, in the last semester, I need to find information using internet. And before using Google, I need to define what kind of information do I really need for my essay. This is something very important, okay? Very good. Your teacher given you a very good step one. In the essay, I need to include the copyright, my information citation. I also did all the work by myself, and sometimes I got help to my teacher. Well, this is very important. I think the stuff for information literacy is about how we use the internet for learning on our own, sure, learn to learn, and using the information in the right way. Being honest, I just used Google and Yahoo for my reports before. Well, it's fine. Use it, all right? But you need to give citations. Ginny said, Discover information literacy is a good way to make it easily to collect and organize information. Okay, yes, I believe the discover term, you know that. It's basically an acronym for a number of steps, right? So it has a very rich process meaning. If you can do every step there, oh, you are sure. Wonderful college students. Okay, here we go. Let's come back here now. Project information literacy. Come, yes. I want to 
situate all of you in a very interesting um, context of information literacy and normally most of the idea has already been described by some of you and just not have wrote an essay there in a particular course. When we need to do something, and that something requires of us to make the best use of information literacy skill, we call it the project information literacy work. That means it's something I need to apply in a specific situation. I still have 50 minutes time. So let's take a look at this one and see if you could make the best use of its understanding. It tells you something about Wikipedia. since 15 years ago when it stopped out, um, it was not comparable to the very famous uh, Britannica, Encyclopedia Britannica, or the pre-printed um, Encyclopedia. And people believe that Wikipedia is not model to provide information that may not be accurate. And so we should not convene, or we should not guide our students to go to look for information in the Wikipedia. But today, um, the picture is quite different, as I've already shown you before. So what we're going to do here is, for me, as a your instructor in this course, I highly recommend that for any topic of your interest, you have to go to Wikipedia to look up some basic information first. And what you can look up there is not just the information you can use, but the information's sources. Because the rules of Wikipedia is, it, it's not going to publish anything unpublished before, what you can find from Wikipedia is always something you can, uh, that has already been published, the sources is very important. So, uh, but the way to cite uh, information from the Wikipedia, you need to learn it. And we are practicing APA format. I think a lot of you have already learned APA in your English classes. It's a very useful format to cite the source and also to find full reference of the source at this point, in your final report, if you looked at the, the guidelines very carefully, I've given you the APA formats, and I expect that you need to follow them, all right? So I think we still have time uh, before we hit 11.15. So let's go for one more topic. That is a very important topic. I want to remind you as a student, never procrastinate. Procrastinate means you know that you're obliged to get something done as soon as possible. You, you suppose you're given 10 days to do it, but if you procrastinate, you're not using the first nine days appropriately. It's only on the, on the precious that you know you have to submit something tomorrow and you start doing something the night before. So procrastination is not very good things. We want you to unlearn this habit, so let's watch this in the context of project information literacy. Do I procrastinate? Sure I do. So 
sometimes I just get too overloaded with too much information coming in. Go to this, write this, turn this in. I don't need to wait until the last minute, but I work two different jobs and have so little time. I know I can always find something online, even at the last minute. I can't always be studying. I mean, college is about having some fun, even if it's only a little bit. At 2 a.m. the night before it's due, when I've got all the stuff I need and I start writing like crazy, it just comes to me. That's when I'm creative. Maybe I'll see something on the bus, a billboard, a newspaper, a book someone's reading, and it gives me an idea for my paper. With all the work from other classes, I just prioritize what's due from week to week and go from there. I wait and I wait for the professor to say something, give me some more guidance about what they expect. Sometimes I delay working on school stuff because, well, I'm just feeling lazy, just too tired to do much of anything. The message you should pick up from this short video is it's a common pattern for college students to procrastinate at work and will stop getting the work done just one or two days before it's due. Now by getting into this kind of procrastination habit of learning, you're really not doing a good service for you to really pick up the expected habit of learning. So we want to remind you that if you happen to be one member of this procrastination plow, ring the bell, you need to get yourself out of this, okay? Because we're getting into the second learning contract and the theme of the second learning contract which is based on inquiry-based learning is self-regulated learning. And one of the five important features of self-regulated learning is you know your learning goals, you know your, how much resources you have, you know how much time you have, you know how much work you need to do, so you better plan ahead and get good things in order. All right. So here we go. If you continue to procrastinate, what's the possible result? Frustrations. You will be frustrated one day before you need to turn in the artifacts for learning contract number one and you discover you never stop up the discussions with your learning partner. What can you do better? Alright, so what can you do better? What's frustrating about conducting research? It's when I type in keywords and I get a whole bunch of results, which sounds good, but so much of what's there is insanely irrelevant. Just getting started on a research assignment is the most difficult part of the research process for me. It's not knowing the right words to use when I search. Let's see, I'll comment on like this, so now, hmm, what does someone else call it who may have published something about it? I always have trouble narrowing down a topic for the assignment. Finding statistics is hard. You're looking for some specific statistics and you have to go through a million articles and then you may never find something you can use. A lot of the time, it's a case of information overload. The more I know, the less I realize that I know. It can be kind of depressing. I never can find that perfect source, the one I know I really want, so I eventually settle. I say this isn't perfect, it's not what I really wanted to write about, but it will work, so I'll go with it. What's frustrating is when I look on the library shelves and I find some stuff, but it turns out to be 10 or 20 years old. Gee, that's hardly what can be called up to date. I can't use this stuff. It's not so much doing the research part of the assignment that's difficult, it's actually writing the paper. What's the research process supposed to be about anyway? Is there some right way I'm supposed to do it? I mean, I always feel like I've got to create some new system each time. The frustrations? They remind me we're still living in the early days of the internet. There's information out there that should be readily accessible that we assume it is. And it is not, though. That's just the way it is. At the University of 
Now we have an excellent library now opened up with all the wonderful resources and learning companies and computing devices. Well, have you ever visited the library and really learned how to use the resources there just by looking at a piece of information? Have you really enjoyed doing it something that if you want to look at something, you go to the library, be it electronic or be it paper -based. Now, if you never have that experience of just one time in your life, you better go to the library often and learn how to use the resources as a student. And by doing that, you're sure that you know how to take information from what you need. And so what you need now is you need some strategies. Okay? In doing everything, you need strategies that will help you get there without much frustrations, without much procrastinations. If you want to know the truth, by the time you get to college, no one says to you, well, this is the efficient way to do research. Find information, you do this on this day and at this point, then you'll have to come back to it later on. This saves time. You have to come up with some method to get through. I start by figuring out what the question is. What does the professor want? Then I look up sources, I take some notes, then I write the paper. I pretty much have it down. When I need some background and to get started on an assignment, Wikipedia is where I go. I might ask an instructor about going in a certain direction. For me, this keeps the paper from going off on a different tangent. Who knows? Might lead to a better grade, too. Depending on how big the paper is, it determines whether I need to go to the library or not. If I have too much, sure, I'll go to the library instead of relying on internet stuff. Writing on a different topic may mean pulling from some different sources. Sometimes I have life experiences or examples I want to weave into the paper, too. If something's really tough to answer, like trying to think of the word to use or how to narrow something down, I might ask someone for help. After I look at the course readings, then I simply look up the citations on JSTOR. It gets me through. I see research as involving the same steps, the same sources, each time. I always say, if it works, then why change it? Here we go. Now, I've given you enough tips today on getting your first money contract done. Now, it really depends on how you're going to put things in perspective to make it work for you, okay? And by the end of this week, and uh, with one more day left, on this coming Sunday, you need to turn in the first learning contract artifacts. You might need to do some research, okay? You need to make some choices. You need to get your learning partner involved. You need to come up with some learning generals, but you just need to come up with learning general for one topic in order to serve as your artifact. But you need to get the, your learning partner involved in discussing this with you. So may I invite you to pay good attention to your skills in information literacy to see how you can get a good job done here. And for those of you who want to do some sharing in our first day's class, make sure you go back to Nashwitz public online discussions um, forum where the call for participation is there and you just press reply and tell us you want to do it, okay? But those who've already done the sharing, you can continue your forum and make sure you keep a good record that this is the day you've done the sharing and keep a lease of your class participations. Okay, I'm going to see you on Thursday. Welcome. And it's 11.15, all right? See you on Thursday. So that's it for today's CISD 113, Section 1, Information Security and Privacy, into this first day's day two.